Okay, so today I want to answer a question that I've been getting more and more often, which is, why do you not fix other products? Why do I keep seeing you fix the same products over and over again? Why are you always fixing MacBook motherboards, blah, 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 on this channel? Um, the first thing I want to go over is my job. My job is not to create YouTube content. I do create a lot of it, but the way I manage to make this possible, the way I'm able to do all of this, is I do it while I'm doing other stuff. So, for example, like recently, any one of my rants or philosophy videos is done while I'm playing a video game. Uh, my repair videos are not repair videos where I'm going, okay, I am going to set aside this time after work to do just this. No, I'm, I'm filming my job. So I put up the camera and I film what I'm doing and I put that up. And what I'm doing just so happens to be MacBook board repair uh, for, the, for the majority of my day. Now I want to get into why it is I've specialized in this specific niche, especially since some people are saying you have this a video on how specializing is wrong and blah, blah, blah. I wouldn't call myself a specialist, but I would say that, I mean, granted that's in my DBA name because it sounded cool, but I, I, I can learn other stuff. The reason that I focus specifically on this and, the, re and the, the reason that I don't try to do a bunch of other stuff is because it's getting more and more difficult to be a generalist in, in this type of field in 2016. I want you to think about this, because like 20 or 30 years ago, at least from what I hear from my own mentors, if, if somebody brought something to you, there was the expectation that they would not be given a price or a time frame. There was the expectation that they would then eventually receive a call that told them what the price was, what the time frame was, what the potential things that were that were wrong with it. Now, somebody brings me something, and this is 2016, they want to know how much it will be before they step foot into the store. They want to know exactly how long it will take and how uh, much money it will cost before I've even seen it. They demand, I mean, most people demand a quote without actually having me see what is wrong with their stuff. Or they'll tell me, well, I think it's this, that, and the other, and how long is it going to take? It's like, how, how am I supposed to know how long it's going to take? I don't even know what's wrong with it. And it's something that's been getting more and more serious with each passing year as people put more and more of their life's dependency on these, um, on these devices. And it's something that I think is worth talking about. So the reason that I specialize is the only way that I am able to answer these questions. The only way that I can tell somebody within five minutes what the cost is. The only way that I can guarantee that I have an answer one way or the other in minutes as to what the price is. The only way I can guarantee that I will fix this inside of one or two days is to focus on a very specific set niche of products and services and kick ass at it. So for example, for the MacBook water pair stuff I do, I have donor boards for almost every single year. I have every single part that's important on almost every single one of those boards for every single year for the products that I service. And I have all the ancillary parts required for testing, required for testing every single other feature of the boards. I have every single one of those things. So regardless of what somebody brings me, if I need to know, oh, does this other function work, I don't have to keep them waiting. I can know within that one or two days. And if I don't get something done within that one to two days, there will be hell to pay. There will be screaming and bad Yelp reviews and cursing and people showing up and screaming and people screaming and calling over the phone and just all sorts of nastiness that I don't want anything to do with. So, you know, again, can you apply my skill set to, let's say, repairing a high-end gaming PC laptop? Yes. But when somebody walks in and goes, how much will it be? I mean, if I say, I don't know, I can tell you later. It's not like, oh, okay, cool, let me know. It's really like you're supposed to know this and you don't or well I have to order this and that and the other to see if it's that so you don't have that stuff like you could tell the snark that that comes out of a lot of the people that walk in and the way that I deal with that is by just avoiding it altogether because consumer expectations have become becoming more and more ridiculous with each passing year and again what I talked about in the cell phone data recovery video with the iPhone 5s there was somebody who was stuck with an iPhone 4 or 4S for about four whole days while I was recovering the data from their 5S. And I got like 17 phone calls over this because that was genuinely disgusting to them. The idea of having a second smartphone just maybe five or 10 years ago was considered a fucking luxury. Like you break one smartphone, you have another. People didn't have that. But here, somebody has themselves a spare smartphone that's a pretty damn good, I, I, I can't stand most of Apple products, but for the most part, the 4S is a capable fucking device. You can play music on it, you can watch high definition video on it, you can get your email on it, it's touch screen, it's, it's a decent device. And they just couldn't fucking live with it. Again, with each passing year, the consumer expectations become more and more 
ridiculous. I mean, UTV and Amplify, let's say, let's take Amp Repair people because I've been talking about this Parasound Amp in some of these videos. Can you imagine, can you imagine quoting somebody over the phone what it would cost to fix their amp? Can you imagine them walking in and looking at you and saying, oh, I'm going to be in the area, so uh, yeah, I'm going to get some food and come back and it'll be done, right? Can you imagine dealing with that kind of stuff? Like most people are used to dealing with impatience. They're used to dealing with that, but they're not used to dealing with the expectation that that stuff is actually okay. But it's part of what I deal with every single day and it's something that will only get worse with time. And uh, this is actually one post that I think really puts this together in the best possible way from the guy that I'm uh, posting on this Motherboard Repair Forum with. So as I said, with the Motherboard Repair Forum, I'm looking to find people who are good at board repair, who are good at it, who are willing to answer people's questions, and of course, this costs money. And this is probably one of the very few business relationships I've had over the course of my life in which I'm the people person. <laughs> and if you didn't believe that, if you didn't believe that, let me read you one of the posts. So I remember... I was talking about a situation on a private forum that I was on, and I was just talking about this, uh, this silly customer situation, and I was just kind of curious how other people would handle it. So let me get that up here, and I will read it to all of you so that you can all laugh. Not that, and probably not even, it's not even about it being funny, it's, it's, it's fucking sad, but that this is, this is genuinely becoming the truth. So this was a post made by the gentleman that I post with on the board repair forum that we have now. So this is what he says. For me, it is very simple. There are only so many repairs I can do in a day, so I just cherry pick. I have given up trying to find someone with the right brain that can fix this stuff like I do. I do have a few monkeys for swapping GPUs and jacks, but anything that needs serious brain power will end up on my desk. If a board has been fucked with and I think it is too much work, it goes straight back. Usually I can tell exactly what happened to a machine in exactly what order. Some clients learn, some don't. I just tell the ones that don't to fuck off. They need my business, I don't really need theirs. Also, I never fix things for end customers, only corporate, the point that's important here. The attitude and entitlement of private customers has been getting worse with every passing year and it's not worth the stress dealing with it. Most of my repairs are actually machines from insurance claims and have no owner anymore. This takes away the pressure of having to fix it in a certain time frame. It does mean I have to buy them, so lots of money invested, but at 75 a pop, I can afford to just junk them. Just got another batch of MacBook crap in about 150 of them, all spills. My next few months are already booked, and I don't need idiots that want to fix their Mac themselves. Just cherry pick the GPUs and simple backlight issues. Now, he is obviously going a little bit over the top in order to make a point. It's part of his personality. He goes over the top when he tries to make a point. And some of that is, again, this is why, this is why in this relationship, I, I am the fucking people person. And again, it's, it's, it's like, it's something that I truly never honestly expected to be in any business relationship. But here, I'm the people person. And um, what, he, what he says about the, into the, you know, the attitude of consumers and the entitlement that they have is something that gets worse with every passing year. And it's something that I've noticed myself. Again, I've, I'm used to people who say, oh, I really need this, do what you can. Oh, I need this for a meeting, blah, blah, blah. But I've, I mean, I, one of the best examples that I have. So Jessa is always talking about, you know, fi you know she, Jessa is all about that whole fix everything movement. Uh, she's all about that whole, you know, like, diversify. I'm going to fix fucking flashlights that go on the top of somebody's, that, that, that go on the top of the dentist's head. All, the, all this shit that I would never bother with. She's all about that stuff. She's all about promoting, repairing everything under the sun. Like she, she's the type of person that would, I swear, if somebody asked, can you fix my car key, she'd probably say yes. And um, I wouldn't because I wouldn't want to torture myself with it. But she would probably say yes to that. So one, time, one day I get a call from a really nice sounding guy, really nice sounding guy. And he asked me about fixing some computer on some boat or something like that. I don't know what it was, some PC board for some motor thing on a boat. This is a really long time ago, so I don't necessarily, I don't remember all the details. I wasn't exactly writing them down. But suffice it to say, it's not exactly something that I have a lot of experience with. Something that controls some motor or engine or function on a boat, that's some computing board. I, I, this is not my area of expertise. But just for the fuck of it, I said, listen, 
if you've watched my content, you obviously understand that this is not my area of expertise. This is not something I know about. I can't give you a price. I can't really tell you much, but I'm happy to take a look and see what I can do. And again, the reason I love the, the phrase, see what I can do, is that it's so noncommittal. It so doesn't, it doesn't um, imply any promises. It just implies that I'll see what I can do. And it sounds actionable and it makes people happy. So I say, I'll see what I can do. And he's like, okay, cool. So uh, you know how much it'll be? And it's like, did you hear our, did you just hear what we talked about? I'm not sure if you, did you just hear what we talked about? I don't fix boat shit. I, I've never, the last time I've been on a boat was like three years ago to visit my dad before he moved in the fucking Staten Island Ferry. Like, what are you talking about? What, how much is it going to cost? I have no idea. And he's like, okay, do you at least know how long it's going to take? And it was at that point that I realized like, that, that, that Duke has a point, like that post, as, as much as I hate to accept it, as much as I don't want it to be the truth, it is the truth. It's like, we just had a fucking conversation about this. We had a legitimate conversation and you're asking these questions. I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea what the parts are gonna be that are required. I have no idea if I can find schematics for this PC board you're sending me for some shit that goes on a boat. But I'm willing to look at it. I'm willing to look at it and invest time. I'm not even going to charge you if I can't do anything. But what are the expectations? It's nuts. And the reason that I don't work on other stuff is because this is the expectation. This is what people expect. People want to know, walking into a business like mine, what it's going to cost before they show up. They're mad if they don't know what it's going to cost before they show up. They're mad if it's going to take more than one to two days. Um... You know, it's what it is. And, and it's not even about general consumers, other, other stores. I had this one guy, he sent in boards, two or three boards. Uh, you know, two of them were fixable within, don't block the microphone, boy. Two of them were fixable within three business days. And, you know, he was mad because he, he needed to know status within one or two business days. You know, we, we, we just had a fire. I'll probably be doing a video on that later. But, um, you know, people have that expectation. And in order to meet that ridiculous expectation, I have to have every single component available. I have to have every single schematic available, every single spare part available, every single thing that I am going to need to test whatever it is I'm working on, all of that has to be available. And I can only do that. I can only do that. I can only meet this ridiculous expectation if I narrow my focus. And I, so I narrow my focus so that I, so that I can meet that expectation. I don't know what I would need to test that board that goes on a boat. I don't have a boat. I don't have any of the things that go to it. Just the time I'm going to spend researching how the fuck I'm going to test this thing after I fix whatever the flaw is on it, that's going to take me longer than that person expects. Uh, it's going to take me to repair it. And um, yeah, I mean, and the, and the other thing I have to consider here is that I'm one individual. If I had 150 stores across the country, if I were... Mm, if I had, uh, you know, if I had 15 technicians, then yeah, I might look into diversifying and have a bunch of other people that specialize in a bunch of little things. But I don't. I have two employees. I am the third person working at this store. I am the only one that fixes boards or does any of this stuff. So I'm totally fine sticking to my one niche, becoming as good at it as I can, and uh, getting as much stuff in as I can that I can work. And then I just cherry pick the things that make sense. And that's, that's what I do. It, would I like the opportunity to work on other stuff? Absolutely. I think it would be cool. It would be. But the reality is I have too much stuff to work on right now. And again, I, he, he puts it, um, he doesn't exactly put it in the nicest way, but what, he, I, th what I think he was trying to say is that it is difficult to find good help. Again, with the whole monkey and the swapping comments, let's just leave that aside from, it's hard to find good help. I know, I've been looking for two years. I've been trying to find somebody who can do a lot of the, the stuff. That, and again, I don't even find myself that smart. I don't think I'm that intelligent. I, in half of the, most of these videos I'm explaining to you, not only that I think I'm an idiot, but why I'm being an idiot and what, 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 you know, I don't think I'm that smart. In spite of that, I find it virtually impossible to find people who, who, who are willing to do this work. The people who are, not, not willing, that are able to. The people who are able to do this work are the people who are able to work at other businesses or their own consulting firms making two hundred fifty dollars to $500,000 a year doing something else. Finding people who are willing to work at the consumer electronics or the professional electronics. Pe finding, finding people qualified to work in electronics in general, in the repair business, it's difficult when you look at the salaries that can be paid off of that business. 
So you're going to be doing it yourself, which, which means that there's a limited amount of work that you can take. So you might as well cherry pick the ones that are going to be the simplest to do. So for me, I cherry pick the stuff that is going to cause the least amount of conflict. If somebody sends me some high-end gaming computer motherboard, it's not that I can't fix it. It's not that I couldn't figure it out. First, now I got to buy a donor board. Now I got to find a schematic and a board view for this thing. Now I have to get all these ancillary components. And it's not going to wind up being worthwhile for that one job. But above all, the consumer expectation is not such that I can do that. I'd like to. It would be cool to do that. But consumer expectations are up here. And my ability to work on other stuff is going to be somewhere down here. So I got to deal with that. I got to deal with the, cons the heightened consumer expectations, which is a big part of why you don't see people fixing stuff anymore, why this whole replacement culture is coming into place. This replacement culture is coming into place, BlackBerry, because people don't have the patience. And it's, and it's, it's, kind of, and it's a sad thing, but it's a thing that, uh, you know, it is what it is. And uh, that's all for today. So that is why I don't do other stuff on this channel. If I did have other stuff to fix, again, if there was a way for me to profitably work on other stuff, if there were some other type of thing to work on where I could, you know, again, I, I could make the same money I do now, I could invest five or ten thousand dollars in all the things, and I could make that back and then some easily. Uh, you know, from all the donor boards, all the schematics, all the parts, blah blah. I probably would, but realistically speaking, there's not a lot, and um, yeah, that's about that. Hi, Blackberry. How are you? Who's a good kitty? Who's a good kitty?